You think monkeys, mosquitoes, and lions are bad? That's just the beginning. I've seen things you've only seen in your nightmares. And if you thought these were just the beginning, oh, there's more to learn in R. Let's talk about how do we pick out specifically in our data set what rows or columns we're interested in. For this video, we're going to play with the sparrow data. Even though we've already looked at it, we've already figured out our answer, and these poor sparrows haven't done anything to us. The t-test compared the perished sparrows against the survived sparrows, but there was a different way to do this, and I'm only going to show this to help emphasize what these square brackets do, with a comma in the middle. What I can do is I can say, which rows am I interested in by putting it before the comma, and which columns am I interested in by putting it after the comma. If you leave it blank, then R will assume that you meant all of them. So I want all the rows, but only the first column against the sparrow data, every row, comma, but column two. And this will give us the same p-value we saw in the other video. There's our 0 0.09236, failed to reject the null, the null said they were equal. If that's not being rejected, then we can't say they're different. That's how I can pick out exactly which columns I want. If I was interested in seeing, for example, show me what is in row one, comma, I want all the columns, there's what's in row one. If for some reason you have an idea that there's a particular row that's wrong or something could be messed up. For example, in this particular data set, if I go down to row 25, there's an NA for the perished because perished, there was only 24 birds, survived and went longer all the way down to 35. So perhaps something funny is happening at row 25, so I could say, show me what is happening on row 25. I'm going to put both those commands up on my scratch paper here so that later if you go and pull up the file that has this code, you'll see that in there and you can follow along. So this notation doesn't look as pretty. It says column one, but here we were able to name column one so that we knew exactly what we were doing. Why could this be helpful? Well, let's imagine that I want to get rid of certain pieces of my data set. For example, I'm only interested in sparrows that have a wingspan less than 700. And you'll notice there's a few that were less than that. Let's specifically look at the perished side. So if I'm getting rid of any birds that perished with a wingspan less than 700, then it's these two data points that I would kill. Let's talk about how you would kill these two sparrows that came out more violent than it's supposed to. I'm going to say, okay, in the sparrow data set, I'm looking at all the rows and all the columns right now. Let's switch, and now the rows I only want the ones where sparrow perished is greater than 700. Let me walk you through this slowly. What does it say? Look at the sparrow data. Which rows? Only rows where the sparrow's perished values are over 700. And having nothing after the comma here says, give me all the columns. If I run this, here is my data set with those two 600s taken off, but I didn't save it. In other words, the box of data is still the same. I need to say, take that and put it back into the sparrow box. So this shortened data set is what should become my data set. This is a way of cropping out rows that we don't want. Now, if I go back to my sparrow data, which I need to click right here. If you just go back here, it'll remember what it showed you before. But if you click on the data set again, it'll give you an updated version. And notice it starts with row three because rows one and two got cropped off. And here we have, we don't have those values under 700. And if I say, show me the sparrow data, what's in the first row now? Well, it's giving me the third line of the data as the first row, which is 703, 709, because it's cropped out those two rows. This is useful, for example, if you have negative values or zeros or things in your data set that you don't want, which is a pretty common occurrence in this class and in real life. So you'll see that again in a future video. You might also remember that there was a bunch of NAs. Is there an easy way to get rid of those? Yes. I want my Sparrow data set to become na.omit of the Sparrow data. And this is another command that we will see again in a future video. Running that crops off the NAs. 
So we will have a video that talks about how do we do all these errors. Right now what's important is I want you to get used to the idea that the square brackets can tell us specific rows or specific columns that we're interested in, and we're going to use that to help us find specific rows that have problems and cut bad data out of our model.